Okay, so here's a very interesting uh, column buckling uh, problem. I like this one. <clears throat> so we're going to have to think about this. All right. So we've got a steel column. Uh, it can be considered pinned at its top and fixed at the bottom, but it is braced against weak axis bending at mid-height. All right. Turn the maximum allowable force P that the column can support without buckling. Apply a factor of safety of 2. Um... Hopefully I do that here somewhere. I may not do that here. Um, but take the area. So it gives us a cross-sectional area. Hey, it gives us the I and X and the I, Y. So we don't have to calculate that. Uh, but if this was an I beam, you, you could calculate the I, the moments of inertia, I, X, and I, Y. But some, for many I beams, those are, if it's a common shaped beam, um, those might be given in the back of the book. All right, so here's the thing. This is braced against weak axis bending. You know, imagine you've got a pretty flexible ruler, right? And if you push down on a ruler as if it was a column, you know which direction it is going to buckle, right? It's going to buckle about that weak axis. So since you know which direction it's going to buckle, maybe you want to brace it in that direction, right? You, to make it stronger, right? So this is braced against the weak axis uh, bending. All right, so first of all, which one of these is the weak axis, the smaller? So this is the weak axis. So it's braced against the weak axis at the midsection. It is not braced against the strong axis. So if it might buckle along the strong axis and along the strong axis it's like it, it there's no um, bracing there's a force P right here it is pinned and it is fixed and so this is what's happening on the strong axis but uh, along the weak axis it is braced and so this is what's happening on the weak axis there's a force P right here but it's almost like it is pinned at the middle. So it is pinned. It told us it was pinned at the top. It was fixed at the bottom. Bracing it kind of gives it a pin, right, that might keep it from um, moving left and right. So <clears throat> I'm breaking this up into two uh, six meter sections, whereas this is a full 12 meter section on, 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 that it might buckle on the strong axis, but I'm breaking this up into in half and saying, okay, it's pinned and pinned right here. Let me just calculate what, how it might buckle right there. It is pinned and fixed right there. Let me just calculate how it might buckle right here. And it is pinned and fixed right here. Let me calculate how it might buckle here. I kind of have three different places it could fail. And let me test all three, right? I have three different places it could fail. Let me test all three um, and see which one has the lowest failure, the lowest um, <clears throat> force that will cause it to fail. Okay? All right. So let's test out... Uh, oh, sorry. Let me kind of change the order right here. I think this makes sense. Let's let's First, let's test out whether the... It, it um it is going to buckle against the strong axis. Now, I, I, I the last problem I said it always buckles about the weak axis. That's if everything is the same, right? If this was just pinned and fixed and pinned and fixed, it's going to buckle about the weak axis. But because we're bracing the weak axis, then that changes things. Let, let, let's let's calculate the force that would cause it to buckle against the strong axis. Let's calculate the p critical right here. Pi squared E I over K L squared Pi squared. All right, the E. Let's see. That comes from the material. That's modulus of elasticity. Two hundred times ten to the nine pascals. Like two hundred GPA, I guess. Okay. Um, all right. Let me let me look at the units here, because in general. I kind of like newtons per millimeter equals, or two newtons per millimeter squared equals um, 
MPA. Uh, but th th these are all in meters. This, and maybe this is real the real reason right here. That's in meters right there. Uh, so instead of having this as uh, MPA, that's why I've got this as Pascals. Let's see how this works out. 200 times 10 to the 9 PA, Pascals. The I for the stronger axis is 87.3 times 10 to the negative 6 meters to the 4th. And so the K for pinned and fixed is 0.7. The length is 12 meters. And I'm going to square that. And so then I've got meters and PA. And so my answer is going to be in newtons. I, I can figure this out, but I've got PA, and then I, I end up with meters squared on top, and a PA times meters squared would be uh, newtons. Okay, so here we go. We've got P critical, the force that would cause the um, column to buckle about, about the strong axis, 2.44 times 10 to the 6. Um, newtons. Two, that might be my answer. 2.44 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Okay. Now, let's see. Maybe it f buckles first at the top section of the weak axis. Top section of the weak axis. So now, P critical, pi squared EI over KL squared would be pi squared E 200 times 10 to the 9 PA. Now the I for the weak axis is 18.8 times 10 to the negative 6 meters to the fourth divided by now the K. It is pinned and pinned, so this is 1, and this is only 6 meters right here, and I'm going to square that. All right, I'm going to square that, and so then I'm going to get my P critical 1.03 times 10 to the 6 newtons. That might be my answer. Maybe it buckles there. All right, now let's let's also check the weak axis bottom. The weak axis bottom. What force might cause it to buckle at the bottom section of the weak axis? Pi squared E, 200 times 10 to the 9. Um, I'm still the weak axis moment of inertia. Divided by now, it is uh, pinned and fixed, pinned and fixed right there. So this would be a 0.7. Uh, it, I'm only looking at half of that, so 6 meters. Square that. I've got a P critical, 2.1 times 10 to the 6 newtons. 2.1 times, that might be my answer. Okay, so I found that, hey, it will buckle about the strong axis at that force. It will buckle right up here of the top half of the weak axis at this force it will buckle the bottom half of the weak axis at this uh, force all right so what is the largest al maximum allowable force p this one right here right might seem counterintuitive but we've done this all semester it's going to fail there first so it can't get any any higher than that that is that right there that force p is the critical force right here um i don't think i've used a factor of safety yet correct me if i'm wrong i need a factor of safety of two against buckling so if it's going to fail if it's going to buckle at 1.03 times 10 to the six then I'm only going to allow it to get up to half of that, 10 to the well, positive 6 newtons right here. That is the maximum allowable force. That's right there's a maximum allowable force I'm going to give it. Okay, that was a tough one. That was a good one. That was a good one. All right. So if, if it is braced one way along the strong axis and it's braced differently along the weak axis, check both of them. Calculate both of them and see when both of them will fail. And then if it asks for the maximum, choose the smaller one because it will fail at the smaller force first before it gets up to the 
larger, uh, any of the larger forces. And doesn't it make sense that you might want to brace it along the weak axis? You might want to, you know, clamp it differently along the weak axis than the strong axis. All right?